my colleague, Shanaz Shahid, and she is going to talk to us about community midwives, refresher training and strengthening knowledge and skills. Shanaz is the program coordinator and a senior instructor at the Aga Khan School of Nursing and Midwifery in Karachi, Pakistan. I'm going to go ahead and mute my microphone and Shanaz, it's over to you and thank you so much. Okay, uh, thank you Jane. Um, dear all, hi. Hope everybody is fine. I'm Shanaz from Karachi, Pakistan and it's 4 p.m. evening time. So good morning, good evening and good afternoon to all. So I'll start um, with my presentation. This talks about community midwives refresher training, strengthening knowledge and skills. So uh, here are the objectives. The presentation will cover the background, purpose, methodology, findings, strength and limitations, conclusion and recommendations. In background, um, as uh, maternal mortality is a major area of concern in most part of the world, despite of several interventions, still very high. And Pakistan ranks third highest in the world with estimated number of 276 maternal deaths per 100,000 live births. And to meet uh, the Millennium Developmental Goals um, to one quarter of its 1990 level or to 140 maternal deaths per 100,000 life births by 2015 is a bit big challenge. It was estimated that skilled birth attendance will need to increase to 90% or higher in order um, for maternal mortality to decline to 140 in a country like Pakistan in developing world. And uh, in Pakistan, 65% of births take place in homes where risk of death due to obstetric complications remains much higher. This is a substantial challenge given that only 48% of births were attended by skilled birth attendant. So mostly people living in rural uh, part of the country, they go for home birth or you know for uh, birthing station birth. They don't go to the hospital and they are mostly um, ending up in having a traditional birth attendant to care for them. So uh, assessment for, uh, of community midwives in rural Pakistan by the Population Council showed substantial deficiencies in knowledge of various aspects of maternal and neonatal health. Hence there was a need to improve their quality of service delivery. Thus. A training was organized by the Akhan School of Nursing and Midwifery in collaboration with the Maternal and Neonatal Child Healthcare Program, SINTH. This training aimed to update community midwives' knowledge and skills by discussing evidence-based practices and facilitate CMWs to provide safe maternity care to women and their newborn and ensure timely referral in case of any complication and enhance community midwives family planning, counseling skills and services. Moreover, strengthen their financial management skill to establish and effectively run their own birthing center independently. Since once they are, uh, they get the diploma, they go in their respective communities, so uh, it is, uh, they, are, they are responsible to have their own birthing centers. So that's why the birthing financial management skills are very important. Methodology, uh, there uh, the participants were divided into three groups comprising of 14 members in each group and a five week refresher training was conducted in Akhan Maternal Child Health Center, Hyderabad, Sindh and the training comprised of an introductory session, four midwifery modules specially covering antenatal, intranatal, postnatal, newborn care and one specific module was focusing on the financial management skills. Data analysis was done by calculating simple percentages. Uh, a comprehensive review on management of childbirth complications and family planning skills was also done, but those were not tested. Uh, the sampling, as you see, um, the, there is the map of Pakistan and there is a circle showing SIN. So 42 community midwives were identified uh, and selected from 11 districts of SIN. You can see on the side this map of SIN is present. And there are small circles in the, um, in the uh, districts from where participants were recruited. So it's almost spread all over Sindh. 
Uh, pre and post assessment of theoretical knowledge and skills was done by using the Stephen Harvey tool and this tool was pilot tested on four of the participants and um, I, this was very important to do uh, a pre-assessment so that we would know what to teach them exactly, what were their lackings. In terms of uh, teaching learning strategies, um, a variety of strategies were used including discussions, lectures, role plays, simulations, demonstrations, group work, case studies, reflective diaries and energizers. The reflective diaries were very new for most of the participants as throughout their training, their academic life, they have never been um, taught in this way. So this was very new for them. Now the uh, sessions, the modules, the introductory session, uh, it, um, it was an introduction to the international and national midwifery organizations such as the uh, International Confederation of Midwives, Pakistan Nursing Council, Midwifery Association of Pakistan and this uh, session basically covered on the um, role of these organizations to improve the status of midwives in the world and in Pakistan. The MLM and discuss the uh, MDGs 3, 4 and 5 and their relationships with each other, major reproductive health indicators and challenges within Pakistan, the role of community midwives in reducing maternal and newborn morbidity and mortality. As I said prior, mostly the deliveries are conducted in the communities by traditional birth attendants. Those are untrained, uh, they have learned through observations and they are you know called dyes. So they practice and the women are very comfortable to go to them and once there is a complications they can't handle it and at the very very late stage the women is asked to now move on. Okay, so uh, community midwives with special care, this, um, they are aimed to, and they target to go into their respective communities where there, are, there is no doctor, where, is, where there is no um, a clinic or a setup as such so they run their own setups and provide care, maternity care to women and child. Now the antenatal uh, module, uh, the antenatal module was uh, quite uh, a bit descriptive, it covered um, the, uh, to discuss about motivating clients for antenatal care as in Pakistan women usually don't go for antenatal care and they feel like everything is normal then what is the use to go to a uh, clinic for checkup so they avoid and they only go once or twice and that's it and um, calculating expected date of delivery and estimating gestational age and as you know the literacy rate is very low in Pakistan so women you know they don't uh, remember their uh, menstrual dates so uh, they go with the moon and they go with the chronic calendar and they go with the chronic calendar and they go with the chronic calendar it was like last, mid of last month or something like that so it is very important for us to and um, in assessing the um, gestational age. Um, this is very important, like um, history is a very critical component, but it is missed in our part of the world. It is not uh, conducted in a way as it should be, it should be a detailed one, but it is uh, Management of minor disorders, like um, the management of minor disorders. we're having difficulty hearing you. Have you done something different? Have you have you moved no. your mic away from your face? No. It's, it's uh, not have you? Still now? No, you're very very distant. Um, what have you done differently in the last few minutes? There, is the mic um, a long way away from your mouth? Could you bring it up nearer to your mouth? Yeah, it's, it's near my mouth. Ah! Now that's perfect. That's fine. That's lovely. That's fine. On you go. Yep. Okay. So should I continue? Yes, please do. Okay. So I was discussing regarding the antenatal uh, module, antenatal care module. So uh, management of minor disorders was also taught. 
since uh, women uh, have so many disorders that can be treated at the midwife's end, so it is very important they should know how to manage those disorders. And interpretations of lab investigations. It is very crucial some tests some basic investigations a midwife should conduct at her site and those are very critical for, uh, for making the plan of care of the women. So these were discussed in detail and you see some pictures the students, the participants are, you know, uh, listening to the fetal heart sound, trying to hear. They did a uh, examination, abdominal examination, and they were practicing and developing uh, EDD of calendars for them, as they have never uh, saw it before. So they were doing it. We shared samples and we taught them how to do it. Now, in the intranatal care module, um, the concept of normality was uh, discussed. And um, normality in, in here in Pakistan, childbirth is seen most of the time is seen as a right. You've gone again, Shanaz. Hi. I can, you're very much in the distance again. Uh, are you turning over some papers which you're following? Because maybe you're knocking your mic away from your mouth. No, it's just the screen and the mic and that's it. I'm not using the paper Am I clear? Oh. There's a lot, sorry, no, I can still hear you just, but it's still um, very fuzzy, as somebody has described it. Um, can you speak to me again? Hi, how are you? <laughs> right, thank you. Um, you're still very, very faint um, compared to what it was before. I know you don't have a brilliant internet connection. Um, and I can hear you, but there's there's interference as well. Um, but you're very faint. There's nothing. Um, none of your clothes are touching the mic or anything like that. The mic is still just near your mouth. Right. Okay. I think everybody will have to turn up their volumes on their computers a little bit. It might well be your internet. No, it's still very faint. Would you like to try turning your mic? Try turning your mic off and then on again. Okay. Hello. Am I better? Hi there. Well, I can hear you better, but there's still a bit of interference in the background. Have a go and see how you're getting on. Okay. So, should I continue? Yes, please do. That's fine. Well, that's okay now. Okay. So, um, I was discussing regarding the intranatal care module. So, in this, we, we discussed the concept of normality. And uh, as I discussed, uh, pregnancy is seen as a disease in our uh, context most of the time. And the healthcare professionals are mostly, mostly getting panic attacks when the woman is going to deliver. So the uh, remaining the normality of the physiological process is very critical. So that uh, we talked to the students and uh, history taking again, review of the records, maintaining the uh, partograph. And that is very critical since they are uh, in an area where there is no nearby any um, transport services or any other uh, facility. So they should be part of that. So if an emergency is there, so the device can be able to identify and travel and transport that. And managing, of course, normal birth, and the 
be repaired and care um, since um, it is not um, um, you know, given to every other woman in our part of the world. So um, delivering without epithelotomy is a hard drive for everybody. So um, again, since they have to do it and we try to make them safe, not to do it, but if needed, if they were able to do it, they would be possible. And for common needs for vaginal examination. Interrupt you to not. Your sound is very yeah. bad at this moment. We can't hardly hear you. There's just a lot of noise. So could we ask you to uh, do the audio set of visa test once more, and 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 okay. uh, be careful to to check that your microphone uh, it is the right microphone. It sounds like uh, there's a lot of noise around what you're saying. So it's very difficult to hear you at this point. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. So we. So you need yes. to click. You need to click in the upper left corner on meeting, and then choose audio setup visit test, and then do the test. And to the audience here, we're sorry, but the, there seems to be some problems with the Shana's uh, audio and, and speak. So, but she will be back just in a minute. She just need to check her settings. So, absolutely fine to start off with, Annette. Um, and um, and then it kind of faded, and then it started coming back again. So, and then it faded, and it got really bad. So, thank you for that advice. Hello, Annette. I did it. So, yes, and there's Am still I noise. Sure? I don't know. Yeah, we, we can hear you now. It's a bit better before than before, but it is still uh, a bit noisy, uh, and it might be your headset. Uh, I don't know if there is any problems with that, but uh, but, uh, but but try to go on, and then we'll see how it goes. Okay. So um, now the next postnatal care module. So the, in this, basically, we discussed about the active management of third stage of labor and uh, the importance of it, placental examination, this is very critical, postnatal assessment and introducing concept of skin to skin contact. So this is a very uh, new concept in our part of the world. So um, we um, discuss with the students, with the participants, the importance of the skin to skin contact and breastfeeding. In newborn care, basically, uh, we discussed uh, provision of the immediate newborn care and newborn examination and then uh, immunization also. Now, in uh, management of birthing centers, we discussed about the how to initiate a small scale business as the midwife um, had to run their own setup so they should be able to know how to initiate a small scale business and what is the importance to develop a business plan and how the marketing should be done and what is the significance of the market, marketing strategy and moreover networking since they uh, had if they had to um, refer a woman to someone they should have a proper network system developed the uh, the participants uh, demographic uh, uh, the data shows that uh, you see 40.5 percent um, were below 25 years of age and 33.3% um, was between 25 to 30 years of age whereas 26.2% were more than 30 years of age. So less than 25 was the highest um, participant's age distribution. Now the working status, if you see this, uh, this slide shows that um, the 90% uh, of the CMWs were working and only 9.5% were um, not working. So that means they had their um, birthing centers, but they were not successfully running it. They had problem with it. The, uh, this slide shows the um, knowledge assessment of the um, participants in terms of antenatal, intranatal, postnatal and newborn care, pre and post. So pre is the blue one, blue bar, and the post is the red bar. If you see there is an increase in the post test 
in all the modules. And although we use the uh, Stephen Harvey tool, um, but still uh, they, the participants were not able in all the components to achieve the level of competencies as given by the Stephen Harvey. This is the skills, uh, skills assessment um, uh, findings. The again entry intra, post and newborn, the blue ones are for the pre and the post are uh, in the red bar. So again this graph shows there were improvement in their skills once they were done with their training. And additional modules as we discussed, um, since the mid CMWs are practicing there, that they should be knowing how to uh, handle some uh, critical complication emergencies during childbirth like shoulder dystocia, PPA, so they, they should be able to manage women at their level and then refer them and moreover the family planning knowledge also. So we, um, uh, we gave a training on childbirth complications and family planning and we taught them how to perform the skills also and we asked them to practice in the pictures you see they are practicing and they were signed off but they were not tested as such for that. Now these strengths and limitations for this um, uh, study is like it's uh, although the strength first of its kind in Pakistan, such training for the community midwives have never been conducted before. And um, mostly practicing, you know, CMWs participated in this training. So this was very, um, very important, very good because they shared their experiences, their life experiences that helped to learn and, you know, gain uh, information. Uh, to all. And participants were of different age group and experience as we discussed on the uh, graph. And uh, the knowledge and skills were enhanced by using different strategies. So we tried to use different strategies um, to teach them different concepts, different childbirth concepts. The limitations, uh, you know, since the uh, 17 midwives. Um, I have only a 18 month training, they have not uh, been in any other professional education, so uh, their attitude, their communication was a bit polite, impolite, and their attitude was um, harsh at times, because they resisted change, you know. The sample was confined to one province, so this was sort of a pilot, we could call it a pilot, because we just uh, try to do intervention at one uh, in a province and then replicate if things go fine. And these EMWs, you know, they were resistant to unlearn things. Since they were with the um, uh, TDAs, as I discussed, the dyes, so they most of the time did and learned what they were doing. Although it was without any evidence based um, uh, knowledge, but those were harmful practices at times. So it was very difficult for the facilitator to make them and unlearn such um, incompetent things, you know, and the length of the training. So um, as, I, as we showed that the participants, most of them were working, they were having their own birthing centers. So um, once they were here for a five week training, so they felt their clients were, um, you know, lost, their clientele was decreasing. So um, they suggested that the length of the training should be um, minimized or it should be in, you know, different breaks. So in conclusion, um, this training, although it was a new initiative, it was a significant effort to um, enhance community midwife development and it was the first of its kind. Through this training, CMWs were able to review the important critical midwifery con concepts and skills and this training enhanced their knowledge and made them competent. Moreover, community midwives learn financial management skills that is useful to sustain their services as being independent entrepreneurs. And I just uh, show you the uh, in a bubble there is a um, quote of a participant. We actually learn and practice practice much more than what we learned in our training. So this was a very um, pro a positive thing for our team. In recommendation. Um, it was suggested that internship opportunities in the community should be given to the community midwife since they have to go there and practice there. So it is very critical. Moreover, um, inclusion of financial management skills should be part of the curriculum as the community midwives 
are you know uh, trained to go and practice in the respective communities so it is very important they should be having those skills and follow up of the training participant it's not a one time thing if you have done it after 6 months maybe uh, you should go and just have a follow up uh, how they are doing and give them a refresher so that that would be effective and useful for them and again as, as i discussed the duration of the training so it should be looked into a bit smaller or in pieces you know a two weeks and then a break and then a two weeks some some sort of that so it was a learning point for us so these um, are the references and thank you um, it was a required for better tomorrow it would be uh, you know our our team model so thank you all i hope you have listened i know there was a so much distraction i can see in the chat session most of the people were saying i am not able to hear i am not able to hear thank you linda thank you jane Yes, um, as Linda, you are saying, are you planning or carrying out this? Yes, we are planning to have such type of uh, trainings in other parts of the country also, and uh, most probably within this year we are going to cover another program. So um, again, we are going to replicate and we are going to uh, take care of the lessons that uh, we have learned from this initial training. Okay, uh, as Fiona is asking, uh, do the midwives get state funding to set? Uh, there is, uh, you know, the uh, midwives just get the equipment, the um, uh, the delivery kit sort of thing to have uh, uh, to conduct the deliveries, and uh, they get uh, two point five thousand to three thousand, you know, um, every month as their uh, incentive. Um, but it is not. effective for the community midwives to run their setup it's very low for them so they have to definitely definitely generate their own business and serve and earn money on their own are the midwives class as independent midwives yes um these midwives according to the pmc pakistan nursing council they um they are eligible to conduct independent normal vaginal deliveries and if there is any complications they should refer usually they don't have to pay for the training because it is like uh, completely they are trained um, and they are you know provide funds from the government they don't have to pay but once they are deployed in their respective community so uh, then they have to you know run their own uh, business and set, set up and sustain their service Shanaz, your sound is yes. getting quite poor again. Your sound is getting quite poor again. How do you feel about turning off your sound and answering the questions in the chat box? Okay, fine. So
Yeah, I just okay. mute it, yeah. Okay, okay. Now you can just write the answers in the chat box to the questions if you like. Not sure how far we got down um, the list of what the questions were there now. <laughs> Have you answered the one about whether the CMWs see them, what the CMWs see as their greatest challenges? Sorry, it'll be a bit slow, but at least we'll all know the answers that you're giving.
session as we're just going to wait for a couple of more questions before we wrap this up, okay? Okay, we'll just get this final question answered from Shanaz and then we're going to conclude this presentation. <laughs> 